Beautiful people. Hey. Hey. Okay, well, my name is Sophia and I'm the student ambassador um, from the University of Utah with Adobe. And today we're going to talk with some professionals at GoPro. Big fan. <laughs> um, we have Katie Marylander, the director of global social marketing, John Mullen. Camp, Senior Manager in Industrial Design, Lisa Jaro, Senior Recruiting Operations Specialist, and Josh Sanders, Graphic Designer. King. Okay, so how about everyone just goes around and introduces himself of like their experience at GoPro and what they do from day to day. So, cool. I can go first. Um, I'm Katie Marylander. I'm the Director of Social Marketing. I've been at GoPro for a little over six years. So if you follow us at GoPro on Instagram, YouTube, that's our team. Um, and we've got about 45 million followers. We have uh, quite a few activations going on right now we can talk about. We've got Million Dollar Challenge. We just launched the new Hero 10. Um, and you can keep up with all of that on our social channels all the time. Awesome. I, I'm a big fan of the Instagram feed. So I'm a, I'm a follower. I'm not much of a follower of like companies, but like I definitely follow GoPro on Instagram because their feed is. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. That um, makes two of us. <laughs> not even just because I work here, uh, but I'll go ahead and go next. I am Liza Jaros. I am the Senior Recruiting Operations Specialist at GoPro. I'm based here in the Bay Area, and I've been at GoPro for about two years. So I think I'm the greenest one of the bunch here. Go ahead, Josh. You go. Yeah, I was going to say uh, second greenest. <laughs> um, my name is Josh. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I've, I've been with GoPro, I think this is about the two year mark, um, working in the digital ad uh, department. Um, so like making banners for websites, um, social media ads, stuff like that. And I'm, I'm John Mullenkamp. I've been at GoPro for about seven years, a little over seven years, I guess now. Um, and I, I'm in the industrial design uh, department. So we sort of handle all of the physical product um, of the company, um, all, the, all the cameras uh, stuff, as well as uh, all the accessories and even some of the lifestyle gear uh, that I don't know if some of you have seen, but we have now. Um, check our social media feed, but you'll see some, some tees and um, even some backpacks and some soft goods stuff. So uh, our team sort of handles uh, all of that, the look and feel and the materials and um, you know, how it's sort of used out in the real world. So, yeah. I see you're rocking one of our sweatshirts, John. I am, yeah. It's, uh, I kind of don't have a big wardrobe of, of other, <laughs> other than GoPro clothes. I just, working from home too, I just, just uh, kind of oh, yeah. wear, wear the gear. Super cool. Thank you, everyone. And before we get like started with the questions, um, I'm going to introduce a challenge. So in our Discord, so make sure you join the Adobe Discord. Um, we're having a challenge with Premiere Pro you making a 30 second outdoor video. We'll choose four video selections that are edited with Premiere Pro on the Discord for a chance to win a GoPro Hero 10 Black and a one on one mentor ses session with a panelist on here of your choice so that sounds pretty cool might enter so <laughs> um and we can get right off to asking our questions so if john could you tell us a bit about your career journey and what like are some key things you did that you think helped you get your position uh yeah so okay well um I, my experience has been a, is pretty varied uh, over the years. I, I, I feel pretty lucky, I guess, to have been uh, at some, some larger corporations, but also um, uh, having some consulting gigs as well. And I feel like 
that sort of mix has helped me kind of see um, sort of the the best aspects of, of of both, and and maybe some of the some of the downfalls and and different situations that are sort of hard in the at a corporation, but also in the consultancy, and try to kind of um, make a mix of them and and make that sort of um, you know use that to my advantage in my in my experience uh, in my everyday job. I think um, my experience uh, coming out of school was was a little tough. I, if, and and not unlike I think some of the some of the folks coming out of school today, there's a lot of challenges in the world. Um, back when I was coming out of 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 getting my degree and out of college, um, it was sort of the economic downturn, 2007, 2008, and um, so it was it was kind of a a dreary time, I'd say, and a lot of um, a lot of things were kind of ho hum in in the in ch trying to get a job and even the financials and financial markets and so forth, and so. Um, but I think there's, you know, for me at least, there was a lot of a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, working with a lot of cool people, and just um, getting out and and trying to see what I could offer to to help out and and you know create value in the world uh, of design. So um, a lot of different experiences along the way, but um, I think just the variety of experiences and and sort of different mix of like I said, consultant consultancies and and corporate jobs have sort of helped me um, kind of balance out a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of relate to that. Like, especially as a student, it's kind of hard to narrow down what you really want to do and trying everything is like, I think that's what I've liked to, I've discovered that I like to do trying everything, which I'd like to like ask the same question to Josh. Cause he mentioned to me that he also makes music. So how did you like narrow down? Like, this is what I want to do. Like, work at GoPro? I I didn't narrow anything down. It, it kind of, um, you do everything and um, what kind of bounces back at you is, is sort of um, how your life goes. It's, it's how I've gone um, through life. Uh, so, you know, I like art. I like music. I like drawing. That just landed me at the Academy of Art and that landed me in the graphic design department that landed me a GoPro, but I, I'm the same. I'm just drawing stuff and making music just um, older, you know? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, would you say that like someone has to necessarily like specialize in something in school to get like a job at GoPro? Like, uh, I mean, a little bit, like you, you do need to know what you're doing, you know? Um, you you need the industry skills um, just with with any company, um, but I think just that like personal that thing that you bring um, is a lot of times what gets you hired um, at all these places is um, the the thing that's like not corporate about you. Um, but we do need you know just the the general structure just so we can all work together. Mm -hmm. What is what is something memorable when you first applied to GoPro? Like, like when you applied there, like what was something special about that process? I guess. Um, well, honestly, so so when I was applying, I did the just mass, just hit apply on everything, um, like reckless, not even looking, um, <laughs> and and uh, when when GoPro um, said, hey, like we like your portfolio, like what's up? How's how's it going? um the way they talked were just, is just so personable um and then like uh, i think the second interview uh we actually go into the office and, and just seeing how the office was set up and they they uh sit you down and say, have some coffee uh we got ping pong over there you know it, it was just so it was so inviting um it really just won me over um they even have meetings on these this giant screen uh so you can just like go into an office room and and there's just like a, a big face on the screen talking to you. Um, it was just, it was just really cool. Um, I think the, the people really won it over for me. That's awesome. I think personality is like a great thing. Like when, especially when it comes to like testing, like a work environment, I think that's something like I really value. Like it's, but even though like I've had places where I like have worked, I'm like, okay, 
is this somewhere like I see my personality fit I think it's like always a personality fit and like sometimes we tend to overthink like am I good enough like with this job but like once you get into like that workplace that you're comfortable with it like feels right so yeah um if I could ask you each one thing how would you define the culture at GoPro so we can take turns doing this um Josh do you want to start with yeah (laughs) sure uh I mean, uh, it's everyone's super nice. Um, everyone's really understanding because uh, we all do things. It's just like human nature. We all have hobbies. Um, we all have lives. So whenever someone gets married or someone has a baby, it's like everyone is there for you. Um, and uh, that's something that really stands out to me. Yeah. Any- I, no. yeah. I totally go ahead, go ahead. agree. I totally agree with you. I feel like it's a super personable environment. Everyone's really friendly. In fact, one of our values is make friends. And I feel like everybody lives that out to the core. Like people say hello to each other in the hallways. People like ask about weekends. Like there's certain celebrations like babies or marriages that celebrated within the team. But in addition to that, I feel like it's super fast paced and really collaborative. So people work together like to finish like a tight deadline. Like I've never felt like I've moved at warp speed at a job before, aside from working at GoPro and it is refreshing and it's exciting. So I think like people thrive off of that energy at at GoPro, but I really think like the the people make up the most of it. I think you guys are so right. You took the words out of my mouth, Josh and Liza, but I would add that we also, like GoPro is a very outdoorsy, um, like get out and live your best life and live your biggest life and capture it It is part of like the product we produce. And I would say, I don't know if you guys agree, but I feel like we live that as people as well. So like if you need to, you know, there's pow day and you need to like leave work a little early in the morning, like you can't start until 10, like your manager gets it. And they, they truly like live the brand and allow us to as a company, which I think really speaks to our values as well as making friends. Yeah, another thing I would add is uh, over the seven years I've been at GoPro, um, of course, all the other tenants and uh, uh, sort of words that you guys described uh, are, is very true. But I, I've also seen that, um, you know, some, some of the people who have left actually who have gone to find greener pastures or have gone to uh, find other jobs other places, um, I, I'd say there's been quite a few, more than just a handful that have actually come back and, and joined us again. And so I think that that speaks well, um, you know, to the culture, uh, you know, I think like we've talked about, you know, I think it's kind of a, a very um, friendly place and it definitely feels more familial uh, for a lot of people. And so it, it feels like home, right? For a lot of people. And so, you know, leaving and going somewhere else, maybe it doesn't so much in some cases. And so that you know, some, some people have come back. So that's pretty cool. That makes me so happy to hear. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit why like your role like at GoPro was like perfect for you? I know it seems like you've had a passion for like industrial design um, from the beginning. So could you tell us more about that? Yeah, I, I've i always, I mean, it's kind of like if I didn't do industrial design, I probably would be on the streets kind of thing. I mean, I, I, I literally like I sketched my way through high school. I think I drew like, more than I paid attention to, to classes and stuff. And um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm quite lucky to be where I'm at today, but um, yeah. So drawing and sketching and, and creating um, have always been sort of my MO and um, industrial design sort of just became like the, Oh, that's for me kind of thing. And I, and I actually didn't learn about industrial design until sort of later I was, um, you know, into my twenties already before I, before I heard about it. And so, um, yeah. And, and I just think that like, um, when I found out that you could, you could have this job where you get to be creative and you can draw and sketch, but also get to learn some of the technical skills of like, I, I, I get to use CAD a lot, which is great. Um, I feel like, um, if any of you have seen, uh, like, uh, the movie in inception where, they're building like these cities and like tearing them down and rebuilding them or whatever in the, in the, in the limbo zone or whatever. That's kind of like what I feel like my job is. I, I, I build a lot of things that um, some of them get to see the light of day and get to, you know, be consumer products. Um, but 
um, a lot of them don't, and and that's fine, and, and I'm okay with that because for me that the joy is in that creative process and and the development of things that you know nobody has seen before, it, um, and so it, that's very fulfilling. Cool. Um, someone from LinkedIn, Celeste Torres, ask, or um, Ever Williams ask, how would you recommend learning the design tools? That could be a question for Josh and John to answer. You both can. Uh, I'll I'll start. Um, I guess for Adobe, um, honestly, do things um, like personal projects. I feel like um, when you try to do something yourself without trying to learn like the program, just try to actually execute it, you'll end up um, learning it basically uh, just out of experience. Um, I think that's the best way to go about it because a lot of tutorials, it's just like really boring. Uh, it's, it's, you don't want to, I don't know. I'm not the type of person to learn a program by like reading the manual or something. You kind of just like jump in it, try to make, I don't know, album cover for yourself and see what, you know, see what the buttons do. Uh, that's, that's the best advice I can give. Yeah. I mean, just let your passions uh, drive you to, to this, to the appropriate solutions. You know, if you're somebody who's really into illustrations and getting, you know, some, you know, making some very, um, sort of ornate artwork and, and, and so forth. Um, maybe you, you know, you're doing like little napkin sketches or thumbnails, um, on pen and paper, but then you can bring into something like illustrator and, and get really, you know, granular with it. And so I just say like, let your passion drive you to the right tool, um, whatever you're into and whatever you're trying to create, um, you know, kind of find out what the right tool is for that and what the people in the industry, um, that particular, you know, genre are using and, and go for it. Yeah, and I would even add on to that, like even at, like keep records of that, like especially when you're trying to show like employers like what you've done. Um, especially, I feel like like you said, um, Josh, like personal projects kind of hit home because you've put in that effort and like making it like something unique and um, also just like keeping track of it, like whether it's in a portfolio or and such. And this is a question for all of you, like what would you say? Um, to an applicant like trying to stand out I know we mentioned like portfolios but yeah like if you guys could add on to that how about Katie takes add- that since she's she's hiring right now right Is I that right, am <laughs> <laughs> um what would make someone stand out well I typically don't I, I, I again I work in social media so it's not necessarily all roles are related to um, design or portfolio based So part of it is just having a clean, easy to read story in your resume. Like I can't express it enough, but I know Liza, you probably look at a million more resumes than I do. But when I, when I see one that is very concise and easy to read and really demonstrates like, who is this person? So maybe it has a photo, maybe it doesn't, but it's really like, this is, this is who I am. This is what I'm good at. And and if you're in school or just graduated, it should be on one page and it should tell me everything I need to know right away. Yes, Liza, I'm I think, sure you've got more to add. Yeah, I think clean and easy to read is a, I mean, it, from looking at a lot, of, a lot of resumes, it's refreshing to see something clean and something that looks sharp, but also that tells the story of you. And so I think, you know, on top of that, it's really important to be authentic with that, right? So like, that's what's going to make you stand out of the crowd. Um, and also be be patient. You know, a lot of us, when they, we applied for our first jobs or first job at GoPro, you know, sometimes we didn't make it on the first time around. So I would definitely say be patient and try to tell, you know, the story of the job that you want in your resume with your experience as well. And if you're having a really hard time doing that, that's when it's time to, to write a cover letter. I don't recommend it for every job, but if you're having troubles connecting the dots, and then also don't be afraid to use your network. If you know someone at GoPro, hit them up, ask them for help. Yeah, speaking of um, networking, Ever Williams asks, or David Garcia asks, how much percentage of where you are now is based on who you know of your network? Each of you can answer that question, but Liza, you can begin. 
I did not have any connections at GoPro. I think I got really lucky in regards to, I was contacted by a recruiter who actually became my manager. Um, so I did not have a connection at GoPro. But I feel very lucky to have many now. That's awesome. I will say that I had the opposite experience. I did know someone at GoPro and they um, referred me for the job. And I do think that like referrals are huge when you're, you know, looking when you're a hiring manager and I put a job out there, it's on Indeed or it's on LinkedIn. And I, let's say I get 500 applications. It's a lot to go through. So if I can filter it out quickly and say, oh, well, Josh says this person's good. Like I'll, I'll level them to the top right away and take a look at their resume. So I would just reiterate what Liza said. Like if you know someone at a company or even someone who is like at your alma mater, you know, like Sophia, I know you're at Utah. Like if you see someone at a company that, um, you know, went there, it's, it's an easy like in to start chatting. And I think that people are really open to helping people get started in their career and get their foot in the door. That's awesome. I'm glad we're friends. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Me too. <laughs> uh, I, I'm in the same boat as Liza. I've had zero, uh, zero friends at GoPro beforehand. Um, but, uh, it, that doesn't, um, you know, negate the truth of, of having a connection, um, at a job, um, networking, even, um, I'm like, I'm all about people, I guess. So even like in the interview process, if you make a friend at the interview, maybe you don't get the job, but next, next place you interview, it's the same person. Like you, it's all very interconnected and, and, um, you know, making friends here, even though this might not be like your win might lead to a win, uh, you know, next year, tomorrow, you know? Yeah. That's a, that's a good message of optimism and hope. I think it's, you know, just stay sticking with it and, and, you know, just co collect those, those relationships and, and, um, keep them uh, meaningful by reaching out once in a while and, you know, saying, Hey, and, um, in my, in my, uh, experience, I, I'm maybe a little different that, um, my, our industry, industrial design is, is a little bit more niche and it's, it's kind of a small, um, definitely a smaller group of folks out there. And so it's always a joke that, you know, you really don't want to burn any bridges in industrial design because, you know, it's, just, you know, you, everybody knows who you are kind of thing. And we're just, it's just a smaller group. So, um, I, it's hard to, to not get a job or to get a job in industrial design and not know somebody um, at, at that place. And it, it was the case with me. I actually was was invited to, to sort of check it out by um, one of my good friends who I still work with today. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it, networking's a big deal. So um, I have a question for Liza. Um, what are some ways that recruiters will identify the soft skills that they are looking for on resumes, LinkedIn, or applications? Yeah, so I think a lot of that can be demonstrated in, in your resume. So I think when you're applying to a job that you really want, like if you've got your dream job, right? Look at that job description. Um, so if it's, you know, do an X at GoPro, look at that job description and tailor your resume to to meet that job description because recruiters are really looking for you to tell the story that you can do this job, um, you know, based on what they need, you know, based on the requirements. So I, I definitely would say that. And again, I think I would reiterate, like if you're having trouble connecting the dots between the job you want and your experience, that's when it's time to leverage your connections, or get a little more experience or even write, write a cover letter to help explain kind of, you know, where you're competent and where your skills are. And Liza, you've been recruiting recruiting for a long time. What's new and different or unique to the talent pipeline at recruit at GoPro when recruiting? Yeah, I think this is a great question. Uh, recruiting is always changing, and the field, the pipeline is always changing. Uh, but first and foremost, what comes to mind is like how the pandemic really evolved the way that we think about how we perform our work. So as a company and as employees and kind of what's important to candidates, what's important to employees. So as people were adapting to the pandemic, a lot of us really got a taste of what it's like to work flexibly or work from home, right? You've got more time for you. You've got more time for your family. And this is like echoed, I think, throughout 
all candidates throughout all of GoPro. And so we've really um, had to think about how we change the way that we do our work or we hire for our roles. And, you know, something that we have recently done is implement kind of a remote work, flexible work policy. So a lot of roles we've really thought about, can this be done remotely? And does a person actually need to be in an office to get this done? And in most cases, it's not. So I think opening up um, the flexibility to work from home and allowing our employees and candidates to really figure out, you know, what they want to get out of life and how to live their biggest and best lives. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was going to ask, like, with the pandemic, how have, like, you and your team transitioned, like, to remote work? And how has it affected the company culture or, like, the workflow? Like, each of you can answer this question. I'm interested. <laughs> uh, I'll answer. Um, first off, I'm so happy to not be on the San Mateo Bridge every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I, I thank God every day, um, but uh, going online, um, it has, you know, I feel like it, it does kill a little bit of the, the fun. Um, there isn't, you know, the big ping pong tables and like the, the rally, like all staff meetings, um, things like that. Um, all that stuff really does make you happy to work where you work. Um, and I think uh, being inside, being in your house, uh, you might not get to see all of the, uh, I don't know what the word is, like the, the fruits of your labor, I guess. Um, so I think having some sort of uh, way around that, I, there's um, a lot of group things that we do at GoPro. Um, like even right before this, we had a, a drawing, like a little drawing class. Um, with Paco and uh, he'll uh, teach us how to draw on the right side of the brain and, and everyone will log in and uh, kind of draw our our face on the Zoom uh, and little things like that. It's just, it's fun, personable things to, to remind us that we're a team and, you know, a family. I couldn't agree more. I do, I miss you guys. <laughs> I miss the energy of an office. But it has been like the positive is that kind of like Liza was saying is like your time is more your own, you know, and if you can kind of if you work better early in the morning, you can make that happen. And if you want to go for a run in the middle of the day, you can do that. Um, and it has like changed the way you work. Like you have to craft your emails more carefully and manage your calendar more cautiously and um, there's a lot of those things that I wish that they taught you more in school too, like how to manage your inbox, how to learn how to do Slack, because that has been our lives now. Um, so if you guys do have a class like that, take it <laughs> or any sort of boot camp. I think that's crucial to being successful these days. And I don't see us going back full time. Um, so it'll always be kind of part of the mix. Yeah, I was I was curious to ask you that question too, Katie, especially if you're just social media. I wouldn't say just social media because there's just – it's not just like cool graphics, like what more does your job entail? I've been wanting to ask you that besides like, yeah. has it been easy to do be, do remote work with your job? Yeah, sure. Um, so at GoPro, social media is one of our biggest awareness driving marketing arms. So we're actually one of the biggest brands on social media with about 45 million followers. So it's not just like posting a photo or a video on Instagram. It is also like, developing product go to market strategies. It's um, a lot of comms and PR, like how do you tell this story? How do you engage with these people? Um, there's also an element of like social listening. So what does the community say about our product? Um, and you can give real time feedback to internal teams so they can adjust and adapt to those. Um, and then also uh, social media is live globally. So you might follow us at GoPro, but we also have are live in 22 countries around the world and we have 77 handles and languages everywhere. So it's a pretty big network. Um, so it, it, there's, there's quite a few elements to it. And our TikTok is sick, so check it out. <laughs> Wait, I actually might have to subscribe to the TikTok because I don't Oh, yeah. Know. Okay, <laughs> I will definitely be doing that. Um, John, we can hop back to that question, like how remote has affected your workflow and yeah. Yeah, so uh, 
our, our group is a little bit more hands-on. And so, I mean, we, we deal with, um, you know, passing around physical samples of products as they come, come in from some of our manufacturing partners and also some of the future stuff we're working on is, is very physical in nature. And so it's been a little different in, in that we can't sort of huddle around a, a table in our studio anymore and, and um, sort of shoot the breeze that way. We, so obviously we're, we're doing a lot more like shipping uh, models around the country now and, and, um, so I, I frequent myself uh, over at the UPS store, uh, just getting stuff out and receiving packages and stuff. So there's a little bit of things that have changed, but um, I think I think like Katie said, you know, I do miss the energy and I, I miss the people. But you also kind of miss you a little bit when you just you're kind of in the grind for many, many, many years, like like most of us have been. And and I think that in some ways the the pandemic has sort of opened up our minds to the idea of. Uh, a little bit more of, at least for me, sort of self-care and, and taking time for um, other things in life. And I think GoPro has been just a great place to um, to be during this time for, for for many reasons. But one of the most is I, from our from our very top leadership, our senior leadership team, and our CEO actually a very big um, uh, proponents for for um, you know taking time and living your life as as you sort of want to live it and, and, uh, making time for work, obviously, and kicking butt along the way. But, um, but really, you know, just, um, being flexible with, with who we are and what we want to do with life and, and even letting us, you know, some of us have, have moved, uh, into remote locations now. So, um, it's just been, it's been helpful, I think in a lot of ways and embracing the, the sort of new way of working. And so, um, yeah, I, um, it's at, at first it was sort of a, a huge, uh, burden, but I think now it's become sort of uh, a neat thing, especially at our company. Yeah, I think I've learned during the pandemic to like just explore more about like what I can make and like how to like alone time is also super important. So that's really good, like checking up on your mental health and such. And I also have a question from, um, Paul Gonzalez, he asks, I currently have four projects I worked during on worked on during my boot camp. Would it be worth it to go back and flesh them out or try to learn something new and incorporate it into a new project? So I, I tried to answer you, Paul, but <laughs> yeah. I guess there's no way to type type out to you. But I, I typed out into this thing and then I was informed that it didn't <laughs> it didn't actually get go anywhere. So um, that was kind of lame on my part. But um, let me just. Uh, take that real quick. Uh, from my perspective, I, you know, in the industrial design world, um, we often keep a portfolio and you have many projects. Um, I'm not sure what, what exactly type projects you're talking about here, Paul, but um, anytime you have uh, older projects or things that, that if you're still, I, I would say, if you're still passionate about them, uh, whatever they are, um, feel free to always go revisit those. And as you gain more knowledge and more skill, uh, as, as you learn more in, in school and, and just through experience and, and practicing your craft, um, definitely feel free to go back to those old projects and freshen them up or fix them as you see uh, they need to be fixed and, and and make them appropriate for, you know, getting that next job or, or whatever it is you you want them for. But yeah, definitely don't feel like you have to kill things just because they're they're old. If you still love them, then, you know, just give them a little paint job or fix them up. Yeah, I feel like I've kind of set my eyes on some pro video projects because I'm a film student and I like doing a lot of passion projects or like little vlogs and sometimes I just leave them uncompleted but it's okay to pick them back up because you kind of have a fresh new set of eyes and then you're like wait this actually looks good or like I want to add this to them so really good advice John um and before I ask this question to um Katie um, just a reminder that um, to check out our Discord and our challenge to create a 30-second outdoor video with Premiere Pro, or you'll have a and you'll have a chance to win a GoPro Hero 7 Black and a one-on-one -on -one mentor session with one of the panelists here. And my question for Katie is: um, You look like a person who likes to have lots of um, to have lots of outdoor adventures and gets to be at work while having fun. What is one of your favorite creator meetup moments? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, pre-pandemic, we used to do all sorts of meetups with like YouTubers and vloggers and um, athletes 
and other influencers. And I think my favorite was in Broome, Australia. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's on the Western coast. And we had like a hundred top creators out with us. Um, and we basically test drove cameras by doing all sorts of activities. So we flew in seaplanes and we went snorkeling and we went in whale watching. Um, it, we went, I think there was like um, a sup squatch. It's basically like a giant sup stand up paddleboard. We had as many people as we could on there. And it was just a great opportunity to get like GoPro top creators in house um, together with influencers to, you know, really like learn from each other, figure out like, what do you want from this camera? And then seeing what everyone could create. So we do challenges really similar to the one you guys are running right now um, during those events. So this is like great practice for that kind of thing. So I just learned Katie has a way cooler job than me. <laughs> That's like a lot of fun. They, 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 they keep me in the basement and they just say, hey, you just do your work. You don't go in <laughs> Well, I don't get to go unless you make the stuff, John. Yeah, so you're, like, you you're the mastermind behind this, John. Yeah, I I definitely, um, I, I have made a video. It was like a Moab vlog and I made it with this like Hero 7. So Love it's super it. fun like putting to work like what you make, John. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Liza, we have a question for you. Um, what would you hope a new hire would contribute to your team? I, mean, I guess each of you can answer this, but. Yeah, we can start off with you, Liza. Yeah, I'll um, kick it off. But yeah, I feel like everyone should answer this question. I think like a sense of curiosity and a sense of passion, right? Like I want somebody that's going to show up to their job wanting to learn and wanting to make a difference and wanting to make an impact. So, you know, show up with some passion and ask questions. Uh, I'll go next. Um I, honestly, same same thing. I, I think uh, like the curiosity thing. Um, like a lot of times we're bored. I, like th this is like our day to day. So when a new person comes in and they're they're like pushing all this new stuff and they they got um, all these ideas, uh, that's like what's really cool to see. And it's like what it's like oh yeah, I do work here. Like yeah, let's let's like get creative and stuff. Um, it really like brings it back. Um, that's that's what I like. Yeah, I think it also like you in your day to day and sometimes you don't like look at the high level. And when somebody new comes in on the team and has those questions and has that curiosity, it really makes you question, OK, why do we do these things the way that we do them? And is there yeah. room for improvement? Like, how do we make it better by these questions that you're asking? Yeah, the fresh eye is key because you get so in it every day that you forget that you have a cool job or yeah, yeah. how awesome our camera really is until someone comes in and kind of gives you that reality check. And I would also add that at least in social media, it's not something you necessarily are expected to know 100% coming in. It's more about being hungry and smart and interested. And we can teach so much uh, like oh, so much about it once you get here as long as you have like the desire to learn that's great yeah i think the only thing i would add to that is um just the uh i, I think the humility to be part of a team um sometimes especially in i, I think creative fields there's tons because there is a lot of sort of personal achievement with you know hey i drew that or that's my concept or that was my idea and um that's my model or whatever it is that i, I feel like um you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for ego to sort of creep in and at GoPro, um, I, I could probably speak for the whole company, but at least definitely on our team, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, we speak in terms of uh, we and us and, and it's not about me or I, and it's, especially when, you know, presenting to, um, you know, to some of our executives and stuff, we never said, well, I thought about this. No, it's like, it's always we. Um, and even if you know, you know, 100% you did all the work on that on that given project or on that given uh, presentation, it, it should still be um, about the team and about the group. And, and um, I think that's just it's so much better way to work. And it's just it's fun. That being said, Liza, do you have any interviewing tips you can share or like are interviews mostly online, like because of what's going on still? Yes. 
I am very happy that you asked this question because I love it. Uh, I'm going to answer the second part first. So yes, interviews are mostly online. Um, they used to be on site prior to the pandemic, but now that you know we're we can't all safely be on site right now, um, everything is remote. And so on on that note, I highly recommend logging into your interviews a minute or two early to flush out any technical difficulties. I feel like there's nothing worse than being a candidate and like not having your camera be able to turn on. So give yourself a few minutes, and if you're like feeling so not inclined technically, feel free to reach out to your recruiter or the coordinator and ask them to like set out a test run to help you flush those out before your interview and make you more comfortable. And then when it comes to interviewing, um, my first recommendation and biggest recommendation to candidates and panelists, so people that are interviewing you, is to come prepared. Um, so being prepared will hopefully ease your nerves a little bit and allow you to show up as the best, uh, the best version of yourself. And some tips on preparations are taking time ahead of time to review your job, the job description of the job you're interviewing for, review your resume, go over your experience and be able to speak to certain tasks and challenges and successes of each of the roles that you've had or specific classes if you've not had a lot of professional education. And then research the company, go on their, you know, for GoPro, go on their YouTube, go on the website and read about our news on our blog, The Inside Line. And then also know the values and the mission of the company you're applying for and interviewing for and really understand how they relate to your own personal values in your professional drive. Um, I also, you can stop me if I go over, I have a lot of tips. <laughs> Um, but also think about like previous situations at work or in school where you've had to demonstrate certain soft skills, right, that this job is requiring. So think about a time you've had to, you know, demonstrate resilience or resourcefulness or empathy or whatever those soft skills or even hard skills are. And then pre be prepared to speak to those clearly. So a well thought out answer will explain the situation at hand the tasks that you are required to do, and then the actions that you took to accomplish that task. And then not only that, but you wrap it up by sharing the results of that accomplishment, right? Like, what did you learn from it? What did you take away from it? What was the result? Did it turn out well? Did it not? What would you do differently? And then last but, last, last but not least, remember that interviewing is a two-way street. So you're being interviewed, which is really nerve-wracking, but also know and take pride in that you're interviewing the company as well. This could be a place where you spend a lot of time and a lot of your energy. So make sure it's the right fit for you as well. And last, I guess, be authentic. Be you. Yay. Um, a lot. No, that was <laughs> great. great. I really appreciated that answer. It was well thought out. So... And also I like the, like, yeah, like you got to also keep in perspective, like, or also have the mindset of like, why do they want you? I've been told that as well. Why do, why did you apply? But why would, you, why would they want you? So good advice, Liza. Um, Heather also has a question. She asked, um, what suggestions do you have for getting past the ATS resume readers, a lot of places are requiring bachelors of science degrees. What if you have just a killer portfolio, but only an associate of science degree? That is a tough, tough question, but a good question. Um, you know, I think they're I'm trying to think of the, the right way to phrase this. They, I mean, you got to have the requirements. There's going to be certain set requirements for a job role and there are non-negotiables for that. And so I think that is difficult to navigate, especially if it's a job you want. Um, I would say reach out to your connections and then figure out, you know, ask the recruiter, are there are certain things that, you know, they're willing to flex, the hiring team is willing to flex on? Um, how can I demonstrate that I have this experience, even though I may not have that bachelor's degree? You know, sometimes there's a give and a take, right? Of You may not have that degree, but I've got X amount of years um, in this industry and in this experience, and this is what I can do, and here's what I can show for it. Um, I think it's tough with the resume readers. There are people reading your resumes at GoPro, I can promise you that <laughs> there's not just a just a filter but um yeah in terms of getting past it i think it's really just trying to tell that story within your resume right just having a really clear concise story about you and your brand coming back to exactly what katie said yeah and speaking of portfolios josh um your portfolio is really good um how how much do you think that's helped you get your position uh, thank you, first of all. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, 
uh, like I was saying, like I, I'm a personal project, just like do you and hopefully someone will recognize it type of guy. Um, uh, I just, uh, even through school, um, I was making art on the side. Um, I was having art shows, um, just totally outside of classes. Um, and so then when it got time for portfolio time, everyone's like, okay, put all your projects in there. And I was like, I don't really like my school projects. I kind of want to put this like art stuff in there. Um, and that's what I did. And, and when it was time to apply uh, and I was having the interviews, they were saying, yeah, that art stuff, can you look through that? Can you explain that? Tell us more about that. And uh, that really validated me. Uh, it made me, um, I guess, double down on, on just like being yourself and all of this. Um, I think the portfolio that you make is really reflective of the art that you gravitate towards, even like the, the topics, um, the type of companies that you're rebranding or anything like that. Um, that's what connects you to the company. Um, like I'm not working out of real estate company as a graphic designer because I was doing a bunch of cool like skateboardy stuff in my portfolio, you know? Um, and so that's that's how you just naturally move towards what you're meant for, I think. Awesome. I have another question for you. Um, are there like any other, I know you mentioned like you like music, you like to do everything. Sounds <laughs> like we sound like the same person. Um, are there any other side hustles like you're working on? Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I guess I, I'm doing everything. I, um, I had a performance at, uh, like this bar near the Chase Center last week. That was like super cool. I like, I don't do that. Um, but yeah, I was, I was like doing music at the Chase Center last week. Um, I'm doing this today, which is crazy to me. Um, <laughs> uh, I paint, let's see. Ooh, right. Pretty cool. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. I, I have a bunch of art stuff everywhere. Just like, you can see all the pink behind me. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything all the time basically how do you manage to balance that because i i have the same like thing where like people are like wow you do so much but how do you like balance it all and like i want to still be the same person i am right now like doing a lot of things because i feel like life is just a, a lot about learning and doing things and so how do you manage to balance that because i also want to do like you know, cinematography, video, but I also want like Max's job at Adobe. So shout out to Max. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you can do it. It's, it is hard. There's like time, you can't be everywhere at once. Um, I think letting people know that you are trying to do everything is like the first step. Um, you know, if you're telling me that you're really into gardening, maybe I have something for you, you know, you, you never know. Um, I think just letting people know your intentions will usually get you, get you somewhere close to where you want to be. Um, and then and for, for balancing it all out, that'll come. It's, it's not going to be balanced in the beginning. It, it never is. Um, that, that just comes from experience. You'll find your flow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely haven't found my flow sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, <gasps> yeah, like you, you literally won't. Like I swear, like don't even, <laughs> don't even look for the flow. Just like do, do everything. Okay. It'll, awesome. It'll um, I have a question for everyone. What is your favorite thing about working at GoPro? I know you guys mentioned the people are awesome and like the mission, like make friends. But what is something else that has stood out to all of you? I would say outside of the people, um, shoot, the, the product's really cool. I'm not going to lie. The camera is actually like, it's a fire yeah. camera. Um, like I, uh, before, before working here, never used one in my life. Um, I rented two of them and now it's like, it's my thing. Uh, and the, they're just like super small and, and you can take them everywhere. You can have like six on you at the time. And it's, it's like, it's really cool. Um, 
And I think just um, seeing the the content and the the like hype videos of you know in, in all the meetings um, just really like makes you proud to be a part of it. Oh my gosh, Josh, yes. I mean, working in social media, our product makes my job so easy compared to like, if I was trying to sell shampoo, what would it look like every day? But here it's like, you know, guys juggling soccer out of a hot air balloon is just yeah. another Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. I'd say I'd say cameras are, are a pretty cool perk as well. I, I never had a GoPro or used a GoPro before I joined GoPro either, which um, I thought that would be a deal breaker. But um, luckily, um, it wasn't. And so I've, I've had a lot of fun um, just getting into them and using them over the years. And they're just um, I don't think I mean, I, I get to be on the inside. So I get to see what what goes into making them. So um, and, and obviously, like a lot of products we use in the world today, um, we, we kind of take it for granted that yes, we have these massively complex cell phones that we take around with us. So these supercomputers in our palms, right. In our, in our pockets, um, GoPros are, are, are similar in that they're just, they're very complex. They're made up of thousands of parts and components and electrical bits and, and parts that help, uh, thermals and, and our battery, uh, stuff and, and the optics and all the stuff that goes into them. It's just, it, they're, they're like little mini cities in them, in of themselves. And so. Um, it's been really neat to just um, learn about all that and and get into it, and um, it's uh, it's it's quite um, I guess like like I said, kind of humbling to to be involved with it, just because you see how uh, how much effort and work actually goes into to not just the product I'm working on, but also other products in the world. And and if I know how complex this is, I know how complex some of the other stuff that's going on is as well. And it's just it's kind of mind-boggling, but it's a great time to be alive. A lot of a lot of cool stuff happening in, in technology and in, in just in innovation in general in the world. So. Yeah, I, oh, sorry, Liza. <laughs> I was just gonna say I'm a big fan of like every time you guys release like a new like GoPro. Like I'm a big I'm a big nerd for specs, so. I bet you're like always excited about like how everyone's like so excited about what you guys like make, especially like the hype behind the social media and behind like the design. So props to all of you. And yeah, you can go ahead, Liza. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I think like your comment just drove like specifically everybody's touching on the product. And I agree. Like if I if I'm not allowed to answer people, I would say the product. Um, but specifically launch is when we launch a new product, there is like this electric atmosphere. And like I've been working remotely every launch that I've been a part of GoPro. And I am like, I get goosebumps. I may get emotional. It is just such an exciting time because all of this hard work that people have put in throughout the entire year finally gets released. And you're like, wow it's pretty amazing what we do and the time that we're doing it. And um, so the product itself and the launch and the excitement, it's a fun place to be. John, I have a question for you. So I've seen some of your side projects on LinkedIn. Is there anything new you're working on? Did you talk about these when you were like interviewing or showing them off? Um, yeah, well, it's been a long time since I've interviewed, but yeah, I had, uh, much like Josh, I, I love Josh's comment about his portfolio and some of his passion projects and stuff, because I, I too feel like that's where, what, what sets people apart. Um, I actually am involved with sometimes reviewing, uh, student portfolios and, and folks coming out of, out of industrial design programs at, at um, colleges. Um, and so sometimes I, it, it, I can see the ones, the portfolios that have a little sprinkle of, of a little something extra. Obviously, you know, there's all these student projects across the country right now. There's many schools and whether you're industrial design or graphic design or whatever it might be, there's sort of their set projects that a lot of the, you know, the curriculum has you go through. Um, and of course you have to do those to keep your grades up and to, to graduate and stuff. But uh, really, I love it when I see uh, people's passion projects in their portfolio and um in fact um it's kind of going on a tangent but when i got my first internship um it was with uh, adidas a footwear company um that most of everybody knows about but it's uh up in up in portland um i uh i had a whole portfolio um set aside that i had sort of done on on my own that was just uh footwear related 
projects because I wanted to design shoes. And um, I, I actually got that internship with zero student projects in my portfolio from my actual, um, you know, classwork. And so it, it can be done. And if, if you just, if you're passionate about it, like Josh said, you know, fill, fill your portfolio with things that you love. And um, obviously if there's stuff that shows your skills, that's in a, you know, that's from school, don't be afraid to show that too. But, um, you know, think about what's going to make you stand out and that's going to be your, your passion and what you're into and stuff. Um, and so um, as far as my side projects, I'm, I'm kind of limited in time these days for side work, but I'm, I'm always tinkering with something. Um, I still love, uh, designing shoes. I love designing cars, uh, thinking about transportation design and just, I feel like I can design anything. I recently did, did some, uh, logo work on the side. Just, it's not really what I do. I'm not really a graphic guy, but I, I dabble in just different things. And like Josh, I'm trying to be sort of a, 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 re a renaissance man of, of creativity and, and just love to dabble in it all. So yeah, it's fun. Love it. Would you, John, would you say like in this like world, would you, hire someone with a resume or a portfolio? Oh, def definitely a portfolio. I mean, resume, I, har I, I hardly ever look at resumes. I mean, because I think, like I said before, it's like if, if you, in, in our industry, it's, it's so, it's such a small world that if, if I see your, res if I see your portfolio and I see a couple projects, it, there's, there's a light, high likelihood that, um, you know, I've probably, I probably know what firm you worked at or where you've been based on those projects. And so I'll know maybe somebody there or somebody um, that knows you already. And so it's kind of like your portfolio is kind of king in our world. Um, but, um, but obviously, you know, a, a resume is great too. A nice, a nice, I, I don't want to, Liza be mad at me if I didn't say, a, you know, you have to have a nice resume as well. And um, you, you speak best for, for your team and who you're hiring <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely the creative work. Um, but I will say that uh, as a creative professional, you need to have a pretty slick uh, resume and you need to be able to uh, think about composition and, um, you know, layout as, as it pertains to, uh, you know, your, your text uh, and your, your writing as well, and not just your, your visuals. And so definitely if, if, if you come with, come with a really ugly looking resume, it's probably, and if I happen to see that first before I open the portfolio, it's probably not going to be good. <laughs> And um, one question um, for each of you: what what kinds what types of things are you guys each working on at GoPro at the moment? I'll go. Uh, I mean, uh, basically, I guess now it's it's time for the Black Friday holiday stuff. Yeah, so so we're uh, pretty much working on that. Just like all the all the things that uh, go into that, um, you know, just designing the, the banners, the social, the display, um, kind of all the assets um, on on the digital advertisement side um, for the holiday. Like it's it's yearly. We're always doing new stuff, like seasonally. So yeah. Um, I kind of mentioned this in the beginning, but we have a few social campaigns running and one for whoever wins this GoPro or if you have one we have the million dollar challenge going on where you can shoot for your share of a million bucks and we put it into a big GoPro highlight reel so right now we're sourcing content and starting to compile that video um, you can go on our YouTube and see the last couple years they're pretty they're pretty epic um, yeah and then we just had our big Hero 10 launch. So we're on social, making sure people are understanding, getting their questions answered, um, and just kind of showing what the camera can do. Okay, I think we've run out of time, guys. But I've, I'd have i like to thank you all for coming and sharing your knowledge. Um, just a reminder, everyone in the Discord, there's a challenge for a 30-second outdoor video with Premiere Pro for a chance to win a GoPro Hero 10 and a one-on-one -on -one mentor session. And please make sure to check out our survey. You may be selected for a year of uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and make sure to take our survey. So again, um, check out our survey. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And um, audience, um, let us know in the chat what brands or companies you would like to see next. Thank you.
Thanks so much. Thank Thanks. you. See ya. Bye. Bye. Hey folks, it's Riley from the past here, and I'm super excited to give you guys a little bit of insight into what Adobe Lightroom on mobile has to offer and how we can use it to elevate our professional profile pictures on LinkedIn, for example. This tutorial is fairly short, so I won't be going incredibly in depth, but I strongly encourage each of you to explore this app yourselves and really play around with all the different features that it has to offer. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom and start with this camera feature on the bottom right here. Hey guys. So first you're going to notice we have these three settings, automatic, professional, and HDR. We're going to start with auto because that's normally what you're going to see when you first um, open the camera app. So the top left we have the flash, on and off. Um, top right we have this camera flip mode. And then if you really want to have some fun, we have these filters on the bottom right here. And you can actually apply filters while you're taking your photos. And then one last thing while we're in auto mode is that if you look up here in the top middle, we have this DNG tab. And DNG is a much higher quality photo than what the normal camera application on your iPhone will give you. So it's super cool that um, this feature is built into the Lightroom camera. So now that we've looked at these things with auto, we're gonna move on to professional because there's a lot of other settings that we can mess with here. Exposure is a super cool one. Um, if I get way up close to my light, I can move this down and bring the value back in my face. And if I move away from my light, I can um, go ahead and move this exposure up. Um, a lot of my photographer friends out here probably be pretty familiar with ISO. And it's really cool that the Lightroom camera actually allows you to use ISO in an iPhone. That's pretty unusual. Um, so that's super cool. And you might also notice this bar that I have going through the middle of my screen. This is um, actually just a level. If you go to the top right, you can see these three dots. And then click on this grid here. Um, this sort of just helps me, you know, keep my screen level and not do anything wonky. And then you can also add these grids here if that's what you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with this level here. So now that we've looked at these things in the general camera, we're gonna go ahead and move to the home screen of Lightroom. And I'm gonna go, go ahead and edit a photo for my LinkedIn profile picture real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and then I'm gonna pick a photo. And down here you might notice, you'd be pretty familiar with all these different settings if you're used to editing photos. Um, you can look at the light settings, you know, mess with your exposure. Um, we've got your color grading here. But we're gonna go ahead and look at some Adobe Magic and click on this selective edits down here in the bottom left. Um, and I'm gonna click on this plus button on the top left and select this middle one right here. This is a radial selective edit, and I'm gonna go ahead and select my face, and you can actually invert this, but what this means is that everything in red in this circle is gonna be edited, and everything that's not is gonna remain the same. So this is pretty cool because I can go ahead and make changes to my face without altering the rest of the photo. So I'm gonna to go to light here, I'm gonna move this exposure down a tad, maybe add some contrast, um, up the highlights, and you can really have fun with this and um, fiddle around with things as much as you want. But I don't have as much time, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a preset. Um, and this is just because I don't have as much time to you know, fiddle with all these things and really have fun with it. But I'm pretty happy with this, and I'm going to export it to my camera roll. And then we're gonna hop over to LinkedIn real quick and quickly add this profile photo to my LinkedIn. So we've got it here. I'm gonna choose this and there we go. Well, that's it for me guys. And I hope you all learned about how you can easily use Lightroom Mobile to elevate your profile photo and personal branding, and maybe even be in a better position to score that dream job of yours, like at Adidas, for example. Thank you all so much for listening and I hope you learned something.